Thank you for joining us for the webinar, Emerging Energy Value Ecosystem and Utility Transformation, a webinar held in partnership with Tata Consultancy Services and IDC Energy Insights. In case you haven't joined us before, I'd like to take you through the event logistics for today. So you can submit your questions anytime using the Q&A section on your screens. Please use the hashtag TCSUtilitiesResearch to post any questions on Twitter or to follow the discussions. A web conference replay will be made available within the 48 hours after the webcast and you will also receive a separate email giving you information on how to download the full reports that will be discussed in today's webinar. Let me introduce you to the speakers for today's webinar. We have with us Roberta Bigliani, who is the head for IDC Energy Insights across EMEA. And we have Sumit Kumar Ray, who is the CTO for the Utilities Business Unit at Tata Consultancy Services. So without further ado, I will pass the control over to Roberta. Thank you, Kano, and uh, welcome to all of you joining us today, or uh, even to the ones that are listening to this uh, uh, webinar on demand, so the recording in the next days. The goal of today's call is actually to share with you some of the findings of a very detailed and articulated study that we did uh, um, together with, uh, with TCS, and uh, um, looking at the European industry utility uh, sorry, European utility industry and, and its profound transformation. Uh, Sumit and myself uh, will spend a few words to set up the context uh, and also to briefly explain the approach that we have been taking for executing this study. But most importantly, we will focus on giving you uh, a sort of preview of some of the highlights that the study um, will much better develop. Um, we will focus on three major areas, the utilities, new revenue streams, the different approach utilities are having in uh, um, transforming, organizing, and uh, especially interacting with the ecosystem. And then we will finally have a little bit of words around uh, the technologies for uh, um, digital transformation. And uh, let me um, hand over to Sumi to set up the context for the webinar. Thank you, Roberta. So, like Roberta, uh, you know, as Roberta mentioned, uh, the summary of the research will be published in three reports, and you know uh, they read very well thanks to Roberta and the IDC team. So, the first report being on the new revenue streams. The second uh, is about the collaboration and the ecosystem, and the third, the technology which is underpinning uh, the transformation journey in the new energy value ecosystem. Uh, I will set the context by giving few examples of the roles probably the utility will be playing, and that is kind of the genesis of this research. The first example is where we are looking at the utility plays on the uh, as a platform player, integrating the customers and partners. So uh, here is an example. There could be several variations to this. So uh, typically, you know, say uh, John goes to his friend's house and charges his car, his electric vehicle. So how does you know John gives uh, you know uh, he fairly compensates Jim, his friend, uh, on this whole transaction? So there is a lot of gory details which John does not need to figure out, but the utilities have to make it simple and easy for this peer-to-peer -peer transaction to happen. This, the value question could be anything. You know, it could be he going to a market and charging his car, or you know, it could be a business where uh, you know, parking and charging both happens. So this is you know, one such example where probably in the new world, the utility will be playing as a platform player, integrating uh, you know, the customers and partners. I'll move on to another example, which is probably a little bit different. And here it is about dematerializing the service and dematerializing the commodity, but creating something which is more relevant for the customer. It is something which is uh, geared toward the convenience and the lifestyle of the customer. You know, if we think of John again, and uh, in the cold winter, if he's 
warmth at his home has to be ensured. So then there is a value chain integration that has to happen behind it. And you know, if it has to be in a very friendly offer, giving John the choices on how he wants to pay, there are many things which the utility has to figure out behind. So there would be the beyond the meter arrangement, the you know the heating system, his uh, you know his lifestyle and his behavior, and probably the uh, you know partner who could provide a service uh, if you know something goes wrong. That whole thing needs to be integrated in a right fashion. So that's about creating the experience. So here you know it's not no longer a commodity or a service provider relationship. It is a relationship of uh, engaged experience. So that would be uh, potentially a new role of the utility. And third example I'll take is of a very different category. So it's where the utility really anchors on its technology skills. So in a, uh, if a community is setting up a microgrid, for example, there is a lot of nuances into the micro. What is the macro context? You know, what is the micro context of the individual players in that community, for example? So that needs to be solved. Then also, what is the macro context of the microgrid and how it plays into the market and what is optimal for that microgrid to happen? How does the settlement happen uh, among the players in that community? So there are quite a few things where there is a lot of technology play. And while the microgrid on by itself is a competitive element into the grid, it takes away you know, some of the services of the utility, it also creates a new opportunity. So that's where the role of technology uh, and a new business model comes. So these are you know, some of the examples which are uh, alluding to there is potentially a new role of the utility uh, which is emerging. But let us hear from Roberta what is the ground truth, what the utilities are really thinking. Over to you, Roberta. Sorry, um, we, with this study, um, thank you, Sumit. Uh, um, with this study, uh, we really wanted to uh, dig into the complexity and the um, industry transformation uh, by talking with the um, with, with the company and the utilities themselves. And so we executed this study uh, using a, a methodology that was based on. Uh, interviews with uh, more than 120 um, business and IT uh, executives from uh, utilities across Europe. And actually we spoke with, uh, or we, we surveyed utilities from uh, uh, 13 countries, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, uh, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, and, uh, and the UK, of course. So we went really um, country by country to, uh, to, to collect also the specificity of each country uh, under the umbrella of Europe. But we, do not stop, uh, we did not stop just with these uh, surveys. What we also did was a series of in-depth interviews with about 10 senior executives uh, from innovative utilities uh, uh, across uh, uh, Europe, but also we extend a little bit outside Europe, touching upon some people in Australia, uh, to really discuss the survey results uh, and uh, also uh, collect their insights and validate what we were uh, basically uh, collecting via the survey. And all these results, of course, are organized in the three study that uh, Sumit uh, has mentioned at the very beginning. So with no, mother, uh, no further ado, let me um, really jump into the, uh, the findings of the study. And of course, we will not have the chance to go deeply in all of them, but at least in some of them, and you will see more in the reports. So first finding, what future role for uh, uh, utilities? Well, in the chart, you can see that uh, the most important business role for utilities comes from a, a very vast variety. Um, number one is a low carbon energy producer, then distribution system optimizer, flexibility providers, energy services, uh, managing the, the infrastructure for electric vehicle, and then 
energy as a service both for uh, connected home and, and businesses down to the aggregation role and uh, a role in managing the data and becoming data hub management uh, companies and, uh, and also managing the, the microgrids. Um, again, um, no time to comment all of them, but I guess uh, it does not come as a surprise that 77% of executives uh, foresee that the most important role uh, looking at the future is going to be low carbon energy producer. This feeling is uh, uh, very much shared across uh, electricity producer and also energy retailer um, across the entire Europe, but even more uh, by the ones that are playing in the Benelux in France, in the Nordics, and in, uh, in Southern Europe as well. And uh, also the DSO, the distribution company, are very much uh, uh, looking at the entire value chain, talking about these roles, especially in the Nordics. Um, the, uh, the point is that uh, there, all, there, there has always been, uh, uh, in the last uh, 15 years, a lot of pressure, especially in, in some area of, uh, of Europe, but across Europe as well, in terms of low carbon energy generation. And, and if you just think about the wind power, for instance, in the, let's say, Nordic North Sea uh, region, uh, well, a lot of investments have been executed with, uh, I think it's like 46% of net uh, capacity installation for uh, 2016 being uh, um, of wind, um, uh, wind farm. Um, on a slightly different note, let me just pick up another category, um, uh, which is the category of the capacity providers. Uh, the launch of capacity and flexibility market and the new decree on uh, self-consumption, for instance, in France, uh, is an, um, transforming the French market to enable energy suppliers to concretely tap into new revenue streams as capacity providers. And actually, um, the, the capacity provider role is expected to be very important. Uh, you can see from, uh, from the chart is among the top four. Uh, but uh, this role uh, is uh, foreseen slightly different across geographies, for instance, because if you look at the UK, for the UK electricity producer, they expect that this capacity provider role will be the most relevant, so it will be number one in, uh, in the region. And again, there are some other variations across the different, uh, the different geographies. But in terms of roles, um, also distribution companies uh, are uh, clearly um, looking and, and, and foreseeing different uh, uh, roles and uh, they are uh, identifying uh, the possibility and the opportunity to play business roles beyond uh, their traditional uh, core business, especially in facilitating uh, in a sort of neutral way um, the energy market development. And, uh, and Fubit, I don't know if you would like to chime in and uh, share a couple of comments as well on this slide. Sure, Roberta. Uh, you know, there is another way you know which I was uh, looking at this slide, and you know there is three broad categories emerging. So one is definitely the grid is going to become more complex. You know, in terms of you know it's going to become more stochastic, more probabilistic with you know the dispatch you know, generation becoming non-dispatchable, and also there are more complexity coming into the distribution space itself to you know bring in the flexibility into the network itself. So that's definitely a core play and a core value creation uh, in that whole you know transactive grid world, if you will, where the utilities would definitely create a value. And all the roles which you talked about, you know, the uh, the op system optimizer role or the capacity provider role, flexibility provider, those are kind of roles towards that. And there is a, certainly a possibility around that. And then the other area is, of course, uh, you know the system integrator in the home or to an extent system integrator into the businesses. So it uh, you know, be it connected home or you know certain kind of energy services. So there would be roles emerging towards that and you know there are quite a few you talked about uh, around that too. And then there is a third element of play where it's a data play. So you know metering, I know I'm being a little bit expansive on the term metering. Uh, so metering then you know information hub and if you look at uh, you know what goes beyond the meter uh, you you know with uh, more insights into the customer uh, there is tremendous possibilities of uh, things what the utilities can do and you know aggregator is a very general term here it need not be only energy aggregator or energy services aggregator it can really expand so i think you know that was another way of looking at the uh, you know the roles 
the other key element uh, which also I felt, Roberta, we can talk about is, you know, the combinatory role possibilities. So, you know, uh, you, know you can choose, you know, pick any two, for example, the capacity provider role with the EV infrastructure provider role. So, you know, there could be a play, interplay between these two. So, between two roles or three roles, there could be a play and, you know, a strategy. So, in a way, uh, all these, you know, different possibilities of role are individually uh, definitely brings out something. And together, there is an element of 2 plus 2, 5, where there is a role utilities could play. Over to you, Roberta. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess that that's a. Um, I agree with all your comments, and let me uh, re, re elaborate or build on, on top of what you said in terms of interplay and multiple role plays at the, at the same time. Because, of course, with the study, we try to identify and, 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 and classify and clusterize some different roles, but the reality. Uh, we see many utilities uh, across uh, the different, uh, let's say, pieces of the value chain looking and playing with slightly different nuances, with this, more than one of these, uh, of these roles that we have in, in, um, on this slide. So thank you very much for your additional comments, Sumit. Let me move to another element of, uh, of the study, because uh, um, there is no doubt that any utilities in Europe, and I would say that probably not just in Europe, is talking about uh, uh, new business model and, uh, and new revenue stream. But uh, uh, what are we really talking about when we talk about new revenue streams in terms of value? Um, or in other terms, how important will be the new energy product and services for European utilities in the next, let's say, two to three years? This is what we asked, actually, to, um, to the uh, utilities community. And uh, um, what we found is uh, across Europe, uh, 36% of uh, utilities think that new energy products and services will contribute to more than 10% of their revenues, 10%. So it's, uh, uh, let's say, the 30%, 36% of utility, 10% of revenues. And someone might uh, say, oh, well, 10% is uh, not really such a big number. But uh, put that into perspective, and um, uh, to do that, let's uh, take the revenues of uh, a giant utility, one of the top five largest European utilities. Um, let's use Engie. 10% of revenues for them would be 7 billion euros. So it's not a, a small amount of, uh, of, of money in, in the market. Um, think that um, it, it's comparable, uh, actually it's much more than the entire GDP of a state like Monaco or Liechtenstein. So again, it's, it's a, 10% is a remarkable number. Uh, and of course, uh, there are uh, utilities in some European countries that are a bit more confident when it comes to the quantification. Uh, so I, I will recommend you to um, uh, look into the, into the documents and the study who has the highest expectation uh, from a geographical perspective. And uh, you will also see in the study that uh, um, also regulated businesses are really eager to move beyond their core markets with different and uh, in in multiple roles and, uh, and, and way of um, releasing more uh, more revenues. Now, the, the let's say second question that raised on top of uh, I hope uh, your mind uh, listening to us is, uh, okay, we have quantified them, but uh, where will these new revenues come from? Well, for seven. 59% of European utilities, distributed generation is going to be the uh, game changer. And uh, as utilities witnesses, their traditional business model being, uh, of course, disrupted and, uh, and also margin being eroded, uh, the industry is actively, as, as is continually actively looking for uh, uh, playing a role in the distributed generation, uh, let's say, market uh, to, to take out value from these, uh, these technologies. And uh, um, again, uh, if you look at the uh, different roles, the uh, distribution system operator are uh, really into this play and looking to, de to deliver value to their customer in two ways. On one side, by increasing the grid flexibility and, and offer reliability uh, and to be able to accept more renewables and more uh, distributed generation. 
and on the other side, of course, by connecting and, uh, uh, the customer to the grid as again as a sort of uh, backup uh, and, uh, and also as a way to um, exchange uh, the surplus of the prosumer. And, uh, and of course, we have seen uh, retailers jumping into this, uh, or, or part of, um, let's say, uh, market uh, not regulated component of the utility business, uh, moving into offering solar power uh, panels, or, or, or of course, uh, also playing in the market of smart homes. And uh, we have multiple examples. I will touch upon a little bit uh, in, in a moment. Uh, but let me also move, in the interest of time, into another element uh, and another dimension that we look uh, uh, with the study, which is really about uh, um, how utilities are thinking about organizing themselves to deliver these new products and services. Well, you can see the results on this chart, uh, and, um, which say that 47% uh, of European utilities uh, are thinking to run their new businesses within the perimeter of the core organization. So one out of two, out of two if you will. But there are already 26% that have uh, created uh, a, a sort of dedicated and strategic business unit. Uh, the business unit creation is uh, um, also, for instance, very um, popular in, uh, in some geographies, and, and UK is uh, uh, the geography that came on top of my mind to, uh, to give an example. Uh, because in, in the UK, 55% of utilities are expecting to deliver new energy services via a new uh, business unit. And these business units have their uh, own dedicated teams and resources, as well uh, defined targets uh, and accountability for them. And uh, um, in, in some situations, they are also proving to be a little bit more uh, a strong and concrete push uh, uh, to have uh, a sort of different mindset in operating in these new, um, let's say, energy services and, and, um, and product market. In uh, many cases, not all of them, the business unit has even generated a, a sort of separated company uh, which is uh, also having its own brand. And again, uh, if, I, if I think about uh, the UK, Centrica is uh, a clear example. Uh, they run the, their high smart thermostat brand and they have a connected home uh, dedicated subsidiaries that uh, operate across, uh, across geographies. It's Centrica connected home. But that's not just the UK and that's not just, uh, uh, let's say, home related. If you think about uh, a distribution company in the uh, Netherlands market, uh, Alianda, they created a, a sort of uh, uh, separated uh, unit and, and company specifically called Allego, by which they are providing services uh, for uh, infrastructure charging. And actually, they play outside the boundary of the Netherlands, for instance, in Germany. And another company like A2A in Italy has created a smart city, a, a, an A2A smart city company uh, to really manage and, uh, and uh, provide the new services in the context of the smart city uh, environment. Now, um, looking at a different business model, uh, one out of four European utilities is actually even uh, creating and running energy services in tandem with partner. Uh, being the um, industrial partners, technological partners, commercial partners, and this is because, of course, they want to reduce the risk and, uh, and mutualizing the value. And there is also a small uh, per percentage of company, which is actually uh, an, on, uh, on the European level 3%, that are uh, of utility that are even planning to spin off uh, completely new, uh, um, let's say, initiative, very focused on very disrupting thing. And, uh, and I, I, I must admit that the, the study is, uh, is depicting like the French and the Belgian a little bit more aggressively thinking along this line with percentages that goes from 3% to 10, 20% uh, uh, respectively for those two countries. Now, we have been talking about new business role, new revenue stream, a way to deliver now, let's look at uh, one other angle of, um, of the entire story, that is uh, the partner for collaboration. Now, you can see some of the most uh, uh, relevant and emerging partner for collaboration in the slide. Uh, for instance, 60% of European utilities uh, are collaborating with the ecosystem via strategic partnerships. And uh, about 50% are already uh, creating joint ventures. 
um, not just for new products and services, but generally speaking, also for uh, the, uh, the let's say uh, core and the, let's define it a little bit more traditional business. And and of course, if you look at the entire pattern of collaboration of utilities, um, it's not uh, to be uh, underestimated because actually it's still the most relevant uh, partner of collaboration for 75% of uh, utilities, that is the collaboration with uh, the ecosystem of uh, the supplier. And I think that this is uh, even more important, or if I must say even more important than ever, considering the, uh, the relationship and the pressures and the, and the need to also digitally transform the companies. And, uh, and we have seen um, a lot of uh, changes also in this relationship where um, the, uh, the, the both parties are collaborating for co-creation practices and uh, outcome-based delivery models. So also the, uh, the, the collaboration between supplier and, uh, and, and customer is no, is no more traditional as it was uh, very, very significantly. And, uh, and of course, uh, you will see in the second paper of, uh, of the three, um, the uh, of the series of three that uh, um, Sumit has mentioned, that we have uh, uh, developed uh, some example and, uh, and, um, and, and you will see even more information, more concrete uh, uh, example of company along those lines. Uh, but let's move, let's move on uh, another element that we uh, were touching upon with, uh, with the study, uh, which is the, um, our utilities are organizing themselves to drive the creation of uh, uh, new ideas and also to foster innovation. So, um, of course, uh, along the uh, open ecosystem culture that is uh, uh, becoming more relevant uh, in the industry, uh, utilities are also changing dramatically uh, the ways uh, um, by which they pollinate and, and transform ideas into innovation. They are learning uh, to master the arts of uh, bringing the outside in, especially for, uh, for disruption, because as you well know, uh, very often the disruption is more coming. It's easier to, have, to be disrupted by the outside and the inside, but they are also using the inside uh, good, uh, good, uh, good ideas and uh, combining top-down approaches with uh, bottom-up and also lateral approaches. And you can see the different way they are, uh, they are collaborating in, uh, uh, with the ecosystem, with uh, um, of course uh, collaboration with experience group or, and, uh, and academia, and uh, even um, Akaton because 34% uh, of European utilities are using Akatons to drive new business ideas and solutions. And again, this is not just to, for some techie guys, but it's more for thinking and executing business that were not done before or uh, are different from the way they, they, they were conceived uh, in the past. And uh, let me also mention just one thing, uh, that the use of this uh, focus group, or I, I prefer to call them experience group, uh, which is on average 60% uh, across European utilities, it's a little bit more relevant uh, in the market where competition is, uh, uh, let's say, a little bit more fierce. Again, if, you, if I use the example of, uh, of the UK, 75% uh, of companies think that this is a very important way of uh, bringing in ideas from, uh, from the ecosystem. But this is also true for uh, the Nordics and the Netherlands. And uh, again, on the, on the opposite side, if you, if you look at Germany or France, uh, the percentage is a little bit lower than 60%, like 45, 50%. Um, I must admit that uh, it's not just uh, running, uh, let's say, scattered initiatives like uh, an hackathon or, or a special focus group that is happening because the utilities are actually creating organizational ecosystems uh, to, uh, to drive generation and catalyze um, ideas to have innovation that is executed and industrialized and not just uh, fun invention or, or funny ideas. And, uh, and again, uh, the, in, the, in the paper, you will see some of these examples of these organizational constructs. Now, what about uh, gap and, and skill gaps? Because, of course, we are talking about uh, utilities that are playing different roles, that are adopting different uh, way of collaborating with the ecosystem, and uh, uh, different way also of uh, innovate. 
So um, if we look at specifically uh, skill gaps uh, um, in terms of uh, digital transformation, so the, uh, the combination of the company transformation uh, along the line of digital, which is what we are um, foreseeing, and also what is part of the integral strategy of uh, the majority of utilities across Europe, and not just uh, across Europe, you see that there are some significant gaps that utilities need, need, definitely need to fill. And uh, um, some of them, uh, the most important, are depicted in, uh, in this slide. As you can see, analytics and data management capabilities are top gaps to fill. And this is true for about 70% uh, of uh, European utilities. Uh, another domain uh, is uh, application development, uh, followed by smart home and customer engagement platform. Um, if I had to look at these data from uh, a perspective of different clusters, um, as, we, as we did the, in the analysis and the study, um, we might say that uh, um, the, uh, the, the companies, the utilities that are more actively developing new products and services are the ones that are filling the uh, terrible gap and need to, to have collaboration in terms of data management, analytics, and platform engagement uh, for uh, engagement platform for customers. Um, and, uh, and this is, of course, true uh, more, uh, more or less across uh, the geography um, for, uh, for uh, company actively developing uh, new products and services. If we move to the, let's say, geographical uh, lens, uh, um, there are also some different national partners. For instance, uh, UK uh, skill gap is analytics, and number one for German utilities is a customer engagement platform. For French utilities, it's more data management. And there are also slightly differences uh, um, if we look at the uh, different component of the value chain, because energy retailer, not surprisingly, uh, I guess, uh, are feeling that customer engagement platforms, smart home, uh, are absolutely uh, important uh, elements and, and, and capabilities uh, to, to fill. And uh, um, the distribution company are a little bit more focused on data management and application development. And there is also a little bit of differences, if you will, between electricity and gas in, in this regard, because um, electricity utilities are very much more concerned about data management skill overall, while gas company a little bit more uh, on the analytical part of the, of the dimension. And uh, with this consideration around uh, digital and gaps, I think it's uh, uh, the perfect moment to hand over to Sumit, who will drive you through some consideration and some of the findings more related to the data dimension and the technologies. So Sumit, the floor is yours. Thanks, Roberta, again. So, uh, so look, uh, if I remember correctly that out of the 36% utilities who are expecting more than 10% of the revenue, we saw approximately half of them, uh, you know, it was almost 52% of them, who were really investing 10% of their IT spend, or the technology spend, for the new energy value ecosystem. So that's also quite significant. So, you know, there are, uh, you know, a severe spend on the part of the utility. That, and, you know, the next few, Slides are primarily looking at them, and you know what is the outlook of those utilities, uh, you know, rather than covering a broad base. And one one thing is very clear on this slide that it's, uh, you know, all the technologies, you know, be it cloud or the you know cognitive IoT, there is a propensity to spend in each of them really. So one is multiplying the other. That is you know one of the important things which is coming out. That it's not that you know the, the key players are really uh, in the energy value ecosystem are looking at the technologies multiplying each other, and you know for example on the cloud also the significant point is it's no longer an efficiency discussion or a cost discussion on cloud. It's about the agility part of it. It's about the experimenting part of it. So that is uh, you know for example uh, one of the insights which comes out from the technology uh, you know overall uh, angle, and then you know as Roberta was mentioning about the data. So each of these businesses also, you know, we see the appetite for the data. You know, the energy value ecosystem seems to be pivoted on data to a great extent. And, you know, when you look at the 
you know, uh, the utility's appetite, be it from the instrumented grid or be it from the, you know, beyond the meter or, you know, in the distributed energy technology, each of them are great sources of data. And uh, there is a significant element of data play, which, you know, Robert was also mentioning about, uh, which really creates, creates that intelligent enterprise foundation for, uh, you know, the, the right play into the energy value ecosystem. Uh, and it's the sources of data and the variety of the data, but it's also about, you know, how the data is organized. And that's also quite interesting. Uh, we see there is an, uh, you know, there is an effort to create that architecture, you know, which uh, really makes data as the value driver. So data is definitely not any more adjunct to process to, you know, all these energy value ecosystem players. Data is rather, you know, uh, uh, you know, a provider of a process or a provider of a business model. Really. So, you know, if I if I would uh, use the metaphor, like you know, if you touch a molecule of water, you don't feel wet, but when you have a lot of molecule of water, and you know, the wetness emerges. Similarly, with a da with a particular way of organizing the data, we see that property of wetness, which em uh, on you know water emerges in the data value. Uh, ecosystem. So there, there was a consistent uh, approach we saw with each of the, uh, you know, energy value ecosystem players. So I would move on, uh, you know, the key technology and the key play on data uh, to, you know, what is the approach to deliver the solutions. So here again, you know, there is an interesting thing emerging in the in the play in the energy value ecosystem play it's two themes which is dominating across you know the uh, the leading players really so one is the lean and agile development process and design thinking in conceptualizing the products in uh, you know how you conceptualize and create the new products so while there are definitely you know other Rearchitecting of the applications happening to be prepared for delivering, but these two themes seems to be dominated. And uh, you know, it's in many cases not a you know bimodal or a you know two-speed approach. It is one approach which is directly a very lean and agile approach. That is you know so clear. And with the customer or the stakeholder really at the center uh, of the value creation there is a very strong element of you know design thinking which is uh, clearly coming out uh, in you know the way to approach it i would move on and uh, talk about how they are looking at preparing for the it changes too so uh, the core systems so each of these uh, players are also looking at the core systems and making them ready for the uh, you know, future energy value ecosystem play. So two, three key themes are definitely uh, emerging. So one is building the digital core, which is which will give the acceleration, and then on top of that, creating that intelligent social enterprise. And of course, finally, you know, bring in an experience first model of uh, you know creating systems, so which you know delivers experience first. So if we look at all the individual Elements, uh, there is a you know, clear direction towards uh, the changes to the IT systems to prepare for the energy value ecosystem uh, with these leading players. If I look at the providers, uh, you know, that who are providing a provision and how they are provisioning the IT capabilities, there is a clear democratization theme which is emerging. You know, it's no longer dominated by, you know, IT system vendors, uh, you know, large players. There are, you know, cloud providers, both who are large vendors and are getting into this space. Also, there is almost an equal share from the niche uh, providers who build solutions on the clouds. So that is definitely, you know, one of the important things which is coming out. And uh, the other small thing, but significant is, the appliance vendors. So the devices play seems to be languishing at the bottom, and uh, it's 
clearly looks like it's a software defined architecture and it's a software defined solution so you know the appliance really takes a back seat in the whole process so overall uh, you know the what is the roadmap really the utilities are looking at and you know what is the strategic theme emerging to appro you know, to approach the energy value ecosystem across utilities so we see that there are two clear dev, uh, you know paths so one you know of course the concentrating the core you know to uh, keep the customers but to aggregate and expand to become responsive and create new offerings integrating the value chain for the com you know for the customer so it's building on the business competencies so that is one direction where we see it's you know uh, and you know some utilities are definitely concentrating on that and there is another direction we see to create platforms you know which fosters partners coming in and create value creation so in the process you know there is a big uh, better you know there is a higher investment into that creating that technology that share economy you know the world of uh, you know integration uh, through apis so where the value creation is not entirely dependent on that utility but it is dependent on you know how you integrate partners to create value on that platform but definitely we see the category leaders are doing you know both uh, both of these in approaching both of this and trying to integrate both into a strategy so of course you know there could be three uh, you know strategic road maps one either go through the aggregate and expand route and then move on to the leader space or move through the platform route into the leader space or directly have a mix strategy towards the leader space one thing for sure you know it's going to be an very interesting utility in the near future and i know i would request roberto to speak a little bit more on that thanks so much uh, uh, and uh, and and of course uh, um, i can't just uh, uh, i can't avoid to repeat that it uh, not miss the opportunity to have a look at the different uh, Elements that were coming out from uh, from this study because uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, food for thought and and also concrete instrument to think about uh, how to evolve across uh, the transformation and and and, and I must admit that uh, um, some times ago I think it was more or less one year ago uh, as analysts we were thinking uh, we have to talk about the utilities renaissance because of course the, the business models are changing but how we try to synthesize and depict it and uh, we came up with this idea of the 3D the centralized divergent and digital and and i think that uh, um, those uh, concepts are uh, a little bit uh, clear in terms of the centralized and digital um, maybe the divergence is a, is a, is a, is a dimension that could be uh, it could be worthwhile to uh, to spend a couple of uh, of words about it but let me again um, say that uh, the study is actually that we executed together with uh, our friends at TCS uh, is, is really um, giving you uh, additional uh, concrete uh, ideas and action to now to, 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 to reborn uh, in 3D. So the, the divergency is actually, uh, and it's a recommendation, is about uh, uh, being different from uh, what you were used to be uh, looking at the past and find your own DNA, your own culture, uh, to be different from your peers. Maybe the idea, the business model might be similar, but is your company culture that uh, will make it different and divergent. And, and of course, be capable of uh, thinking in a multiple dimension, uh, so in a divergent dimension in terms of uh, uh, geographies, for instance, where uh, um, as, you, as a company you might be playing uh, geographies across Europe or even if you are a global player, uh, geographies across the different continents. Uh, and, and again, uh, divergency is, uh, is a way also to be resilient and to continue to have a, a, a stronger play in the future. And I think that this is really what we have tried to share with you also in terms of uh, um, way of looking for new collaboration partner, 
um, to, um, to think about alternative ways of sourcing talent. Uh, again, the future workforce will be different from what it has been until today. And, uh, and so also sourcing talent needs to be deployed in a slightly different way. And uh, you need to feed the innovation, and, but at the same time, you need to de-risk innovation because even if you say that in the digital economy, failure is a positive thing and we have, and, and we have to, to plan for it, the point is that no one likes to, play, to fail. And if you fail, you need to uh, fail fast and move forward uh, and, and find all the way to reduce the risk of the, of the failure. So failure, but reducing the risk. And, and I think that uh, the, um, we always uh, uh, like to, to, to give some sort of final recommendation in our webinar. And, uh, and, uh, and the first recommendation is read the study. There are a lot of ideas and things to look at it. Uh, and to think about, uh, look at what the other utilities are doing and think if, uh, uh, if you are executing along those directions. And if not, uh, um, of course, uh, uh, think why not uh, and, 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 and prepare to take action. And, and, and to take action now, not uh, in the far future, because as we like to say, the future was yesterday. And, uh, and again, uh, um, if you have uh, more questions, do not hesitate to reach out to Sumi, myself, and the great TCS team who has uh, hardly worked on, uh, on all the analysis of these, uh, of these uh, data, and, 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 and we brainstorm a lot on the findings. And uh, I think that, uh, again, uh, with that, uh, um, we have... Uh, a little bit of time to cover some questions, so um, it's, it's time to open a little bit the floor to you that are uh, um, participating uh, to, the, to, the, to the call. And so let me, let me jump on a sort of slightly different role and, uh, and moderate the conversation uh, with, the, with the question between uh, Sumit and myself. Now, um, the first question that, and again, keep on uh, pushing questions in case we cannot follow uh, and answer all of them. We will get back, of course, individually after the, after the webinar. Um, there is a question about, uh, which is interesting, uh, because it's, a, it's something that we, not, we have not directly covered in the, uh, in the webinar, which is, which other industry do you think uh, um, are the most uh, relevant example for, in terms of business models for utilities to look at? And, uh, and to me, I don't know if you want to start with your consideration around this line, and then uh, I will chime in in a second moment. Sure. So, so the first, the first uh, example which would come definitely is the telecom industry, which was, uh, you know, uh, asset intensive wires and pool business. But then eventually you get marginalized in a B two B two C model. The content industry takes over, and then you know the industry reinvents itself as almost a, you know, a communication, media, and information industry. So it's in the convergence of that. And that is. One example which, uh, you know, right away comes to my mind uh, and, you know, in a similar utility context, probably it's no longer a commodities business or a, you know, or, or a, uh, you know, infrastructure business. It should be a, uh, you know, digital-led service company. So, you know, that way I see a lot of similarity. Actually, you mentioned a very important element to me because uh, you say that uh, then the content take over, and uh, and that's uh, um, a very good uh, um, element to to um, again re, re, re uh, point the attention to because uh, the utilities industry has to reinvent uh, and has to learn from uh, also the telco how to avoid to do the same mistake. So. Uh, if they, uh, there is a, a, a clear need to look at the telecom and, how, and learn from their, uh, from their experience in, in terms of how they were basically um, they were taken over by the, the, the over the top uh, and, and they translate into becoming an infrastructure business but then uh, marginality is different in infrastructure business and so on and so forth. So that's a very good point. Um, I, I have to say that this is a question that as analysts we have uh, received very often. And, uh, and I, I would like to answer in a slightly different way because I think that there is no industry sector that is perfect to look at 
or uh, um, or is, is really the one that utility should consider as a, a completely relevant example. I think that utility should think about uh, looking for examples across a multitude of uh, industries and, uh, and different type of companies because I think that each industry has some um, sort of uh, interesting point. It might be retail in the way they create a customer experience on one side, but uh, um, it might be telco for other perspectives. It might be uh, the, uh, if you think about uh, the asset optimization or very uh, sophisticated uh, activity along uh, prescriptive and artificial intelligence, then other industries might be a bit more relevant. So again, um, it's important that, uh, as Sumit also mentioned, that we focus as, as utility players, we look at other industries, not to mimic what they have done, but to take out good ideas, re-elaborate and reinvent in the context of the utilities business, because that's what uh, I think will, uh, will um, allow to uh, take out a lot of, um, of, of value. Um, there is another question, um, which is uh, a little bit more uh, related to the regulation. Uh, and, and again, um, in this uh, presentation, we were a little bit staying away from uh, uh, the consideration of uh, the, the regulators. And, and of course, uh, the regulation has a, a fundamental and important play in this, uh, in this transformation. But Sumit, let me ask you uh, directly the question, and, and of course, uh, if, maybe I would also add a couple of words. Do you think that the regulation is going to be an enabler or a drag? Or in other terms, it will accelerate or decelerate the industry transformation? Uh, no, Robert, I think this is a, a great question. And uh, so I'll take one example you know, of National Grid. So they are the you know, transmission service operator in uh, UK. Uh, and you know, in uh, uh, two years back, there was a capacity margin gap in the grid. You know, because you know some of the nuclear plants were down. So in the winter, uh, UK was looking at a cold winter, and uh, there was really a four percent margin gap uh, in the capacity. So what National Grid went on to do is to create a product, which they called it demand side balancing reserve. It was a tactical product, but it was really crowdsourcing, you know, the reliability uh, of the grid. So you know, it was. At a meter point, uh, anybody could generate or you know cut loads, uh, and there was a price to that, of course. And the channels which people were looking at were you know all unconventional channel. It was through a mobile app. It was not integrated with the core, uh, you know the regular uh, the main control system, but it was done in a very you know hyper connected fashion in a you know uh, in a different fashion. So I think you know it was. Uh, National Grid is very close to the uh, you know license operation and the regulatory play, but forced to it, the regulation did think of innovatively and exponentially. So I think with that example, with the utility and the uh, you know the industry as a whole facing uh, the possibility of stranded assets, uh, you know because you know there will be also good assets inside beyond the meter invested by. Uh, you know, maybe Lloyd Banks or, you know, sold to the customer uh, through the convenience channel by Tesla. So there is a need for the, you know, there will be a push and, you know, regulation has to uh, be progressive, you know, to make the industry survive. So I think, you know, eventually the regulation is going to be uh, not a drag. It would only accelerate. Uh, but, you know, probably the tipping point is not yet there. As we always like to say, uh, a smart uh, industry transformation needs to have smart regulators and a lot of collaboration between uh, the, uh, the regulator per se and the ecosystem because the, also the regulator can be helped in better regulating the, the industry per se. Um, there is another question. Actually, there, is, there are uh, a series of other questions. Uh, let me just ask you um, this, uh, this one first because it's really related with uh, uh, the, um, the regulation and the transformation of driving it. Uh, is, someone is saying, do you think it will be uh, more the customers or the industry that are driving the, uh, the industry transformation? So it's more industry itself driven or it's more customer driven this kind of transformation that we were discussing about what do you think to me
I think it's a both. It's a you know it's a synergistic element. Uh, there is the energy technologies, which is uh, to an extent uh, you know that whole energy technology element is an inside out change in the industry. You know the whole value chain is uh, changing inside out. So there is an industry driven element to that, but that getting consumerized to a great extent. Uh, you know, and you know, it's becoming a customer technology really, and you know, the customer's propensity towards that is another element. So, you know, both works, but you know, also I think the digital taking away the boundaries really, the you know, possibilities uh, of you know, a value creation by another industry player. So, I think there is a third angle to that too, the technology companies who would leverage digital and integrate both well. So, I think all these three are forcing the changes. So, it's Difficult to attribute to any of, uh, you know, these two individually. Yeah, I like your uh, your again changing the the perspective because uh, that's exactly what the um, the conversation is across the entire study. Change your perspective, think different, but execute in a different way. And and there is a question uh, um, that is uh, uh, you mentioned the word digital, so let's focus a little bit more on on that uh, on that perspective. And there is a question that is asking. Um, in your opinion, which is the biggest challenge uh, faced by utilities company to address their digital journey? And uh, I would like to take the first uh, the first uh, answer on that to me. Yeah, you you uh, you know, uh, Robert, you would go at it first because my one will be uh, possibly a bit negative sounding. Uh, you know, uh, I think the basic vibrancy in the industry, you know, to do something new, that cultural element of it had been one of the top uh, inhibitor. I would say, in fact, you know, as my uh, innovation tenets, I have chosen vibrancy over value. So, you know, value will follow. You know, if I can create a vibrant atmosphere and, you know, engage people. So, you know, from that angle, I also believe that vibrancy element is one of the big things which the utility, typically that whole CapEx OPEX paradigm has brought in uh, over the years, possibly that is one of the biggest, uh, you know, challenge to address. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's actually a good point. And, uh, and, and I agree with you that uh, the, I, I think that the, again, if I want to play a little bit around one of the concepts that I was um, mentioning before, the divergency, I think that sometimes it's a little bit difficult for, uh, in this digital transformation journey, uh, to be divergent. So being capable of, uh, um, let's say, combining the, uh, the DNA that says we have to, if, if you are in, uh, in electricity, for instance, we have to keep the light on, and there is a lot of things that need to be executed, and the system needs to be reliable, and I think that there was no other industry in the world that, uh, or at least in Europe, as reliable as, uh, as, uh, as as utilities, electricity, even more than telco. But the point is that that's one dimension, and the other dimension is I have to think about different uh, uh, roles. I have to think about different kind of uh, of element, and so this capability of having a sort of culture that is divergent is definitely a, a, a big, uh, a big, uh, um, a big element. And and as we were pointing out, uh, uh, the gap in terms of skills that's. Uh, uh, some other uh, some other uh, very strong challenges and what utilities are understanding is that digital transformation is not just about technology but it is about multiple dimension the relationship with the ecosystem the leadership uh, the culture the way they are sourcing the workforce the information dimension which is fundamental of course and the operating model so along all these lines different utilities are are facing different kind of um, of uh, hurdle to to overcome and I think that we have uh, really one minute left, uh, um, so uh, maybe let me just ask you uh, a, a final a final question, which is a bit probably uh, not not a short explanation, but let me ask the question anyway. Um, uh, in one of your um, the question is that in one of the of the slides that were presented, and I think Sumit, you were uh, talking about that, um, different approaches to solution delivery. Um, and, and also uh, provisioning. Um, 
Since you are part of this ecosystem, the question is, uh, are you, uh, what are you doing to allow utilities working in a more agile way? Yeah, you know, uh, there are uh, utilities like, you know, say AGL in Australia, they have chosen agile as default. You know, so all, uh, all, uh, you know, be it customer facing applications, internal facing applications, they are, you know, going ahead with the giant. So, you know, that is one such extreme example. You know, there is a conventional thought that SAP is a big monolith, and if it covers 60, 70% of the processes, how would typically, you know, you do agile on SAP? But, you know, all all kinds of projects on SAP are being delivered there on agile. So this is, you know, one such example for, uh, of course, there is uh, the agility in the energy value ecosystem kind of a project is higher. Uh, than the other ones, but you know that is one such example uh, to give a short answer to your point about. Wonderful, thank you very much. We have actually reached the, the top of the hour. I know that there are some other questions. We will try to follow up offline of, uh, on all of them. Uh, but for the time being, let me thank my co-presenters to meet for the excellent job, and uh, let me also uh, thank the entire team that has worked on this uh, on this project. Uh, uh, which was uh, um, quite a, a deep analysis, as you have probably understood from the preview uh, and the teaser that we have shared with you, with you today. And of course, thanks all of you that are joining uh, the live session and uh, are listening to the, uh, the, recording, uh, the recording session. So on my side, thank you very much. And Sumit, if you just want to thank on your side as well, you are more than welcome. Hey. Sure, thank you very much, and you know, look forward to continue the conversation with all of you over the microsite or you know, uh, over the email. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.